Real New Now. This is Ozark's Fox News at 9. Welcome to Ozark's Fox News at 9. I'm Jennifer Abreu. And I'm John Adams. We begin tonight with some of the top headlines of the day. These stories are Real New Now. U.S. national debt has hit a grim new milestone, passing 22 trillion, that's trillion with a T, dollars for the first time, and growing more than $30 billion in just the last 30 days. This following an increase in domestic and military spending and President Trump's signature tax overhaul, which costed $1.5 trillion all by itself. The Federal Emergency Management Agency Chief Brock Long announces his resignation. Under his two years of administration, FEMA responded to three major hurricanes, Harvey, Maria and Irma. Long was sharply criticized for his recovery efforts to Maria in Puerto Rico. FEMA Deputy Administrator Peter Gaynor will become Acting Administrator now. The teacher strike in Denver, Colorado is entering its third day. The Denver Classroom Teachers Association and the Denver Public Schools School District are at odds over pay increases and bonuses for teachers in high poverty schools. This is the first strike in 25 years in that district. The walkout is affecting about 71,000 students. Well, new at 9, imagine waking up from a deep sleep and realizing a month has passed by. That's exactly what happened to a man after he was struck by a vehicle on I-44 near Lebanon last December. Tonight, Mitch Walker is sharing his story with our Jesse Inman. Jesse, Mitch was struck while trying to fix a flat tire on a semi truck. Yeah, that's right. Mitch was put in a medically induced coma for about a month, but he's been out of it for a few weeks and he's recovering. Decided to share his story of that night with us. Now, the man who hit Walker was 60 year old Richard Sanders, and he kept going, but was eventually caught. And he also didn't have a license and may have been under the influence at the time. Now, that was the end of the road for Sanders, but Walker, he still has a journey of recovery ahead. I've visited a lot of people in this hospital, but this is definitely my first time having to be here for myself. It's been an extended stay for the 35 year old mechanic, Mitch Walker, who was in a coma after a fateful call to change a semi truck's tires on I 44. I was, you know, getting ready to crawl underneath the trailer to get a jack under there and get everything ready, and boom. I got hit. I had all my flashing lights going and all that, but sometimes people just don't pay attention. We've lost many, many officers and many highway workers and EMS personnel because of that distracted driver. Sergeant Jason Pace with the Missouri State Highway Patrol says the law is in place to prevent situations like walkers. Anytime you approach an emergency vehicle, whether it be uh, a police, EMS, wrecker operator, MoDOT, then first they first have to at least slow down, proceed through with caution, and then on divided roadways, if it's safe to do so, to change lanes. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case in Walker's hit and run, which he remembers pretty vividly in the moments after it happened. He called 911 himself. My pelvis was basically shattered. Never did lose consciousness. Uh, I was awake the whole time. I remember the ambulance getting there. Uh, and that's when I really started to figure out that I was hurt worse than I thought. He was flown by helicopter to Mercy Hospital and Walker's brother, who is a Springfield police officer, met him at the helipad. He had been listening to all the radio traffic. And so at that point, he didn't expect me to be alive when we landed. Walker doesn't remember going into the doors of Mercy on December 19th, and he woke up to find that Christmas and New Year's had already passed, which he was hoping to spend with his wife, two boys, and his daughter. Christmas break was going to be our kind of family bonding time where we could all get together. And I slept through it, you know, so I was pretty disappointed about that. Walker is starting to regain some of his strength, but has a long way to go, and he's relying on his faith. You're going to have to learn how to walk again, I'm sure. I serve a big God and, and he's got big plans and we're going to get there. Now Walker told me that he's a mechanic to make money, but his real job is preaching the gospel and he's already had numerous requests to come and speak at churches to tell his story, which he plans to do once he gets back on his feet. Powerful stuff, Jesse. Thank you. We have some new information for you now. An accused serial killer spending time in prison drew sketches of other possible victims. The FBI now releasing 16 sketches in total that Samuel Little, who is possibly the most prolific serial killer in the country, he drew himself. Now, all the details are based on his memories of the victims and recollections of his whereabouts during the time of those murders. 
he's the one that provided the information and then we reached out to the law enforcement agencies to find out if they had a case that matched up with that and it's been uncanny how many of these cases have been matching up. Samuel Little confessed to 90 murders to date, including three cases in central and eastern Arkansas. His confessions have been confirmed in 40 cases, but that still leaves almost 50 unsolved cases around the country. Any person or law enforcement agency is encouraged to come forward if they suspect any cold cases may be traced back to Samuel Little. Well, back here lo locally, a couple linked to the death of a four-year-old in Republic, Missouri, has been arrested in Oklahoma. Back in 2010, Julia Cummings' 19-year-old son, Darby, was found dead in their Montana home. A cause of death was never determined by police. Not long after that, Cummings moved to Republic, where her four-year-old daughter, Kiera, would die a similar death, also unsolved by police. Cummings and her husband are now in custody, and the children's grandmother told us she hopes this arrest will finally lead to a discovery that the couple is guilty of murdering them. I've been doing this for nine years. I have been trying to get justice for them because I know they were abused. Both police departments call it a homicide. The only problem is once a medical examiner brands an autopsy with, with indeterminate or undetermined, it's almost impossible to get that off of there. Republic police tell us these arrests did bring a new interest in the case for the department and hope this may spark some memories and compel people with more information about the case to come forward. A 48-year-old year mother of three was taken into custody by ICE agents after she reported to a St. Louis office for what she thought was a routine check-in. She came um, fleeing poverty and violence in Honduras. Um, and when she arrived to the United States, she uh, presented herself to a uh, Border Patrol agent and sought uh, asylum. Ilsa Guzman came to the U.S. in 1999 seeking asylum. Advocates helping with her case now say she never got a date for a hearing then. But according to ICE, that hearing happened in 2000 and a judge issued a deportation order. In 2014, Guzman was granted an order of supervision by ICE. She has been married now for over a year. In December, a judge denied the motion to reopen her case and today she was taken into custody. A line about whether a pet is a service or emotional support animal in Missouri may soon become a crime. Two state lawmakers are pushing a bill making misrepresenting an animal as a service or assistance pet to get special treatment in housing a misdemeanor. Our Frances Lynn spoke with a dog trainer and a property owner about an increasing number of people trying to get their animals to live in properties that don't allow animals. Frances. Yeah, so the dog trainer I spoke to says it's very hard to find the balance between protecting property owners from people trying to take advantage of the system and then also protecting people who really do need service animals. Emotional support animals can't go in public like service animals, but they can go into rental properties that normally don't allow dogs. The dog trainer I spoke to says the bill needs to target people who try to manipulate the system because property owners feel like they're in a tough spot. As a landlord, I feel like we've lost our rights to protect our property. Usually the dogs are the worst because they scratch on the doors, they scratch the carpet. Um, I also feel like it is a, a liability issue with us because if someone would get bit, you know, I feel like the liability is going to fall back on us. I think there does have to have some, be some type of legislation that gets the fake people who are doing this um, uh, with dogs that aren't trained. So, Francis, this bill has been introduced, but where is it now? So, the bill was heard in the committee on Monday, but no vote has been taken yet. All right. Thanks, Francis. Well, we have a follow-up story that many Ozarks Fox viewers here in the area have been wanting to know about. You may remember last July, this McDonald's at the corner of Sunshine and Campbell in Springfield caught fire. The restaurant never reopened because of that extensive damage inside. But good news for those who used to eat there. A new McDonald's is coming soon. We talked to a spokeswoman who says the building will be completely demolished starting in April and sometime this summer a new store will open up in that same location. The building will have the latest bells and whistles with touchscreen kiosks and serve as an e Uber Eats location. But you may be asking what took so long for this McDonald's to rebuild. McDonald's says it's been waiting on insurance claims to finalize. 
happening this weekend. You may remember this man. This is Mason Lowe, who passed away last month after sustaining injuries from a bull riding competition in Denver. Well, now the Professional Bull Riders Association will be renaming an event in St. Louis this weekend as the Mason Lowe Memorial. There will be also a special bald eagle release in Lowe's honor. Lowe was from Exeter, Missouri. Moving on to weather now, Jamie, we were happy to see warm weather today, but it's not lasting, is it? It is not going to last, but we get one more day of this. In fact, temperatures are probably going to be warmer than what we experienced today, and we hit 60 this afternoon in Springfield. Cold weather, though, to wrap up the week, and it looks like it's going to come with the chances for maybe an icy scenario for parts of the Ozarks. So look at that in your forecast after the break. You're watching Ozarks Fox News at